Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, uh, education, inspiration, guidance, advice. And some things <clears throat> are not always as clear-cut as they may seem. Um, there are verses in the Torah which seem um, very straightforward. The truth, plain and simple. And to quote um, Oscar Wilde, the truth is rarely plain and never simple. I'll give you an example. In the 21st chapter of Leviticus, verse 7, it says, And they, the Kohanim, the, the priests, shall not take, meaning Mary, shall not take a woman divorced by her husband. Priests cannot take divorcees as their wives. They can't marry divorced women. They can't take a divorced woman. One day, Rav Chaim Ozer Grudzinski, this was a real... Gadol Hador, a great, a great sage of his uh, generation, a leading Torah scholar of pre-World uh, War II Europe. And he was giving a shear to his students in his house. In the middle of the shear, this guy walks in, interrupts him, and he says, Rebbe, ich bin a koin. I'm, I'm, I'm a koin. Neg ich nemen a grusha. May I take a divorced woman? Now, the students were underst understandably miffed by this whole thing. It was an interruption, and somebody's got the chutzpah to the audacity to uh, disturb uh, Reb Chaim Ozer's shear. And with such an elementary question, this is like, it, it's clear-cut. The Torah clearly states in no uncertain terms that a Kohen cannot take a divorced woman. Can't marry a divorced woman. Open and shut. What aspects of this Pasuk of this verse that he not understand. Rabbi Chaim Moser looks up at the man, looks him over, thinks for a second, and he says, Yeah, Avade. He says, Yes, certainly. Ir mekt nemen garusha. You can take a divorced woman. The man thinks him very much and leaves. The students, you could have knocked them over with a feather. How could their great sage, their great teacher, this this Gadol Hador, this this great person of the generation? give a ruling that is clearly in con contradicts the Torah. Rabbi Moser carries on like nothing happens, but eventually his students uh, were confused, to say uh, the least, and he noticed as he was giving his shir, Rabbi Moser noticed that his students were, uh, uh, they were there, but their minds, their minds were uh, elsewhere. So he decided to, to address the issue. And he says, you're probably wondering about my psak, my, uh, my ruling to this question. Let me put your, your minds at rest. By the way, did you notice how the man was dressed? Did you notice the man's boots? Did you notice his riding gear? If you did, you would realize that this sincere, simple, honest Jew was a balagala. He, he, was, he, was a, he was a carriage driver. He was a coach driver. He was a wagon driver. In his mind, he may have heard that a con was not allowed to take, meaning to marry, a divorced woman. But he understood the word take literally. And consequently, he wouldn't take the divorced woman as a passenger that she wanted to ride somewhere. He was concerned that by taking her, a divorcee, as a passenger, he was violating the prohibition of the Torah. His students, respectful of Rav Chaim Moser as they were, had a hard time dealing with this explanation. So um, one or two of them decided to go outside and to see if Rav Chaim's hypothesis was uh, true. Sure enough, they went outside and discovered that what Rav Chaim said was absolutely true. He made a brilliant deduction. The woman, who they knew to be a divorcee, they knew who this woman was, she was preparing to board the wagon with her packages. And they realized that the simple, pious wagon driver was finally permitted to take a divorced woman as a passenger. It was um, Rab Schnur Cutler, 
who made a supplement to this uh, story with the following uh, addendum. He says, when a Rav, when a, when a Pasuk, when, a, when, a, when someone who makes halakhic rulings deals with people, he must see beyond the mere question. He must examine the questioner. More often than not, the situation is much more complex than it seems. One's response is dependent on a number of particular circumstances. The shaila, a shaila, a religious um, query, is hardly ever as uncomplicated as it seems. The personality of the questioner must be a factor in the halachic, the, the, the Jewish law quotient. Some people present questions from their own perspectives and in the manner that they want to be answered. Someone, a Rav who is a sage, someone who's perceptive, someone who's knowledgeable and wise, will penetrate the psyche of the questioner and perceive the question that the questioner is really asking. It's not just the question. Look at the people involved. Look who they are, why they're asking. What's the real question here? And then you get to the heart of things. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Mono Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.